My friends, welcome back. Are you ready to do some more math problems? Because I am. We have five more math problems and we're just gonna have fun. We're gonna work through them. Now, if you haven't already enrolled in the Purely Persistent Academy, the link is right down below. Not only do I help you with math in the Purely Persistent Academy, but I also help you with every other subject for the GED or the high set. And it pairs perfectly with your local adult education program. Now, speaking of that, if you are a teacher, I want you to do me a favor and click the link down below. This will add you to my email list where you will receive regular emails with free resources to help you in the classroom because you teachers are amazing and I want to do whatever I can to support you. So students join the membership, teachers join the email list and let's get started on these five math problems that are really going to help you with the GED and HiSET math test. Question number 21. Khalid is 56 years old. So Khalid equals 56. Kathleen is six years older than Brody. So Kathleen equals Brody plus six. The sum of Kathleen's and Brody's ages is half of Khalid's age. So I can say Kathleen plus Brody equals half Khalid. How old is Kathleen? Okay, so that's what we're looking for, Kathleen's age. So I'm gonna do a couple of things. First of all, I'm looking for Kathleen, not Brody. So I'm gonna take this equation right here and I'm going to solve for Brody so that I just have Kathleen. So to solve for Brody, I just subtract six from both sides and I have Kathleen minus six equals Brody and those sixes cancel out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in my other equation. So I'm gonna say here that Kathleen plus Brody, which I just figured out was Kathleen minus six equals one half of Khalid. But I know what Khalid is, right? I already know her age. So her age is 56. So what I'm gonna do is just combine my like terms, okay. So here I have Kathleen plus Kathleen, C plus C is 2C minus six equals half of 56. And I know that half of 56 is 28. So now we're just going to isolate the variable. So let's take the negative six and so add six to both sides and then that gets rid of the six. So I'm left here with 2C, those cancel out, and then 28 plus six equals 34. And now we sing, hey C, how do I get you alone? Right, that's a song from the 80s that always helps remind me what to do in math. Okay, so I'm gonna divide by two, divide by two. This cancels out and I have C is equal to 17. So Kathleen is 17 and here's our answer right there. Now I could always go in and I could put C into these and make sure that it, that it works out and I can figure out Brody's age and I could do all that, but I'm not going to right now. If you have time when you're taking the test, you can definitely do that, but I think we're just good to move on. 22, a backpack is on sale for 25% off. So we have 25% off. After the discount is taken, a 7% sales tax, a so 7% tax is applied. If the original price is P, which equation represents the final cost C in dollars of the backpack? Okay, so first let's figure out what the, the backpack would cost, right? So here we have P is the original amount, so we're gonna say P times, now if it's 25% off, how much am I actually paying for it? So we go 100 minus 25 is 75, right? So 0 0.75 is how much I'm paying for it. So I could just stay here, 0 0.75 P, because I know that's multiplying it anyway. Okay, and now I'm talking about sales tax. So the sales tax here is 7%. So looking at that, I'm looking for not how much was the sales tax, but how much was the cost plus the tax. So what I'm going to do is, I'm, I'm just gonna write the whole thing down 
So the cost equals the, the P times 0.75, I'm just kind of sticking with the format that they have, times the sales tax. So if I just times it by 0 0.07 by the 7%, then that's just gonna tell me how much the sales tax is and I wanna know how much am I paying total. So I need to add the sales tax plus the amount that I'm paying. And so I could go 1.07 and that is the sales tax plus the tax of, or plus the cost of the total item. So I don't really like problems like this. I like to figure them out or I like to kind of break them into pieces. But you know, sometimes we just do what the high set or GED test wants us to do. And in this case, let's come up with the equation. And so E is my answer. Question 23. A newspaper published the table below. It shows the sample of the daily wages paid by five local factories. Each factory reported the wages of five workers. What is the median, so we're looking median, daily wage reported by factory D? Okay, so here we're looking at factory D. So it's important that you understand mean, median, mode, and range. And all of that is in one of the lessons within the Purely Persistent Academy membership. So we will go here to find the median, we need to have the numbers in order. So I'm gonna start with the lowest number, which is 200. So I have 200 and then I have 205, and then 210, and then looks like I have 220 twice. So what I need to do is I need to find the middle number. And so the middle number here is 210. So B is our answer. Question 24. <laughs> A local newspaper published the table below. It shows a sample of the daily wages paid by the five local factories. Each factory reported the wages of five workers. Are you noticing that this is the same table that we saw in the last question? Okay, the worker at factory A who made $180 per day, so that's this guy right down here, whoop, now makes $195 per day. If this value were changed in the table, how much would the average wage increase for factory A as a result of this wage? Okay, so I'm a human, I make mistakes. I'm a teacher, teachers make mistakes all the time. And I've seen plenty of books where they make mistakes as well. And it's okay, right? We give people grace, we, we understand. I don't know if they made a mistake on this question or if I'm just not really understanding how, how it's working because it doesn't make sense to me. But the answer that they have is three. Okay, so what they did is they took 195 minus 180, which is 15, and then they divided that by five because here we have one, two, three, four, five, which gave us $3. So they said the average wage increase for factory A as a result of this raise is $3. And so that's what, that's what their answer is, but that doesn't make sense to me why one person started off at 180 and now they make 195, how that would mean that the average is three. I don't understand that. And so maybe maybe that's the right answer and it just isn't making sense to me, but let me tell you how I would do this a little bit differently. So I would turn this into a proportion. So here, this person made $15 raised and they started off with $180. And then, and then what I did was I figured out, I took the, the mean or the average, I added up all of these numbers and then divided by five and that gave me my average. And so my average is 174. So then I would go by, uh, by X, okay? And then I'm going to cross multiply and figure out what, what the answer is. So I'm gonna take 15 times 174, which is 2,610 equals and then 180x, divide both sides by 180. This cancels out and I'm left with 14.5 equals x. So to me, the average increase for the factory workers will be $14.50 per day. So I don't know what the answer is. I mean, the answer they gave is three, but the answer that I think makes more sense is $14.50. So there you have it. 25. Lydia and Claudia have the same number of charms in their collections. So Lydia equals Claudia. 
Lydia started with six charms and bought five more packs. So Lydia started with six charms and then bought three more packs. Claudia started with nine charms and then bought two more packs. If each pack had X charms, which equation can be used to find X? So if I know that Lydia equals Claudia, what I can do is I can just say six plus three P equals nine plus 2p. You know, I'm using p, they're using x. It really doesn't matter. Okay, so do you see any that look like this? So a definitely doesn't, neither does b. c, no, it doesn't. I mean, it's starting to get there, but it's a little bit different. Uh, d, no. e, yes. So I have my six first, and they have their six second. But you know, it's like saying, do we say apples and then oranges or do we say oranges and then apples? It really doesn't matter when we're just adding, okay? So here I have 3p plus six <laughs> equals 2x or 2p plus nine. There we go, Lydia equals Claudia. They both have the same amount of charms and we could actually solve for this to figure out how many charms they both have or how many charms are in the pack. Okay, my friends, celebrate because we made it through all 25 questions, whoop, whoop. Even if this took you a couple of days or a couple of weeks, you should be proud of yourself because if you got through this far, that probably means that you did all the other ones before. And if you're getting, I would say at least half or three quarters of them right. I mean, maybe, maybe you're ready for the actual GED or high set test, but you should be so proud of yourself that you got through this far. But don't stop here. Go back through, answer the questions, watch the videos again if you need to, watch the tricky ones. Friends, you've got this. I'm just so proud of you for working so hard on your GED or your high set. I believe in you, I really, really do. And I hope that you believe in yourself too because when it comes to the math test, that's one of the most important things you've got to believe in yourself on this math test. Okay, friends, peace and God bless.